Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing here, giving you a personal prediction for Jack Catterall versus Jorge Linares. And as always, this is just my take. Of course, your predictions can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all. And a little bit of fight info here. We have Jack Catterall taking on Jorge Linares. This will be at the Echo Arena in Liverpool, England, airing live on DAZN in the junior welterweight division at 140 pounds with no title on the line. So this is something of a crossroads battle between a former world champion in Jorge Linares and a guy right on the cusp of the top level in Jack Catterall. Linares isn't what he used to be. Let's not try and paint this any other shade of color. But that said, Catterall needs some kind of win against a decent name to stay busy and have something to build off of. He needs a win, not just the kind of controversial loss to a former world titleist in Josh Taylor, a world titleist at the time. You wonder, is Catterall that guy just kind of riding off of that, or is he a bit more? And might Linares have just enough left to help us kind of determine that? Or is Catterall going to have his breakout performance? You just don't know. It's kind of all over the place. So let's break this one down and find out. Now, starting off with the Brit here, for Catterall to win, you want to set up the straight left. I think it's your best shot, and a shot that can be tricky for righties to catch coming from a left. It's just a slightly different look they're not used to. Now, Linares is a veteran, so it's not going to be something that's going to catch him off guard all the time, but if you can throw it well and at the right times, it certainly will. When you set it up, you of course can be setting it up with that jab, but you can also be setting it up with feints, and you can also set it up by just throwing it as the lead shot sometimes, where you've thrown it with the jab or that feint, and now you're just throwing it right there first thing. It will be something that kind of catches him by surprise at times, and that lack of a setup is sort of the setup in that way. So there's various ways in which you can get that left hand home. It's your best shot, certainly something you're going to want to get home as well. You're not a huge puncher, but the shot that will cause the most damage for you is the shot you can get there quickly that he doesn't see coming and that can get there with the most regularity set up the rest of your work off of that kind of jab and that left hand and i think you'll have some success i would also say be physical be strong Linares is a smaller man and has been hurt before those two things should be important to how you're going to approach this fight if you're catarol it doesn't mean you have to worry about a stoppage or just trying to be, you know, a one-punch knockout artist at all. That's not who you are. But it does mean you want to be more physical, as mentioned. You're going to want to press him back. You're going to want to make the shots land hard, stiff. You want to make them count. Press him back into the ropes and then lean on him. Throw your body into it. Just make it a more physically taxing and demanding style of fight. Again, you can do this with technique. It doesn't have to be something where it's just a wild out and out, you know, barroom brawl, but you want to make it physical so that he feels your size. You got big, broad shoulders for the weight, been at the weight more consistently. This is, I think, his first real fight of note at 140 pounds, certainly for a while. So make him feel it by really leaning into those shots, pressing him back, and then even throwing to the body from time to time when you're on the inside and just taxing him in the most physical way possible. And finally, make Linares feel his age. He's a smaller fighter, as I've mentioned, and the smaller fighters tend to age a little bit faster in general. And he's also 38 years old, so he's just aged aged on top of that. Not to mention, he's had a ton of fights and has been stopped several times. To put it as nicely as I possibly can be, Linares is very, very weathered. Use that to your advantage. Build into this fight so it gets tougher and more physical as it goes on, the later it goes on. When the Norris is trying to get comfortable and then start getting going in the fight, that's when you want it to start really feeling like you've been taxing him and setting him up for this the whole time. Again, Linares has been stopped, and he's been stopped late several times. He's also been stopped early, so that's not out of the question, but he's been stopped late as well because of the taxing demand in those encounters, and you can perpetuate this by getting through the gears, pouring it on him late, and then trying to go for the knockout, perhaps in those later frames. Now, switching over to Linares, for Linares to win, you want to get a fast start. Now, you might be able to withstand a 12-round fight and perhaps squeak out a win, but I don't think that's your best bet. Your best bet is trying to get going while the, you're the freshest version of yourself and then kind of striking while the iron's hot, hoping you can build up a big enough lead that it holds for all 12 frames. You also don't want to let Catterall get confident too early. He might eventually build into the fight, but the further you can hold that off, the better. So if you can get going with a nice, confident, positive start for the first four, five, six frames, all the better for you if you're Linares. Your combinations are your best weapon. They work best when you aren't feeling the effects of a long fight, when you're a bit more fresh. So again, this will help you pile on the points, perhaps put a bit of a hurting on Catterall, but at the very least, pile on the points. You can do that early and then have just enough left in the tanks to kind of withstand and any potential late fight onslaught, and I think you have given yourself at least the best chance if you're Linares. 
I would also say land the right hand. In terms of single shots, I think that's one of the best shots you have, and certainly one of the best shots you have against a lefty, and Lenar certainly knows this as an experienced fighter, so naturally you're going to want to get it going. The left hook can also set it up, but keep it quick and just kind of straight into the point so that that right hand has its best chance of landing right behind it. This also might press Catterall back and give you a chance to attack more and preserve some of the energy that you're not going to have to tax yourself with by backing away and trying to circle all the time. It also won't be as mentally draining if you're the one coming forward and applying some of the pressure as opposed to just backing away and having to be so defensive all the time. If you can land that right hand and kind of press him back, make him think twice about coming in and getting his own work done, I think if you're Lenars, it buys you a bit more time, gives you a bit of a better chance to catch your wind, and then proceed in the fight in a more positive way. And finally, I would say speed, not power. Caterall is a big, solid 140 pounds fighter. Your best days may have been at 130 pounds, maybe even 126 pounds. Power just isn't going to be the answer for you. Doesn't mean you can't hurt him, but it shouldn't be something that you're relying upon, in my opinion. You want to rely more on your speed, which you have a bit more of in your kind of reserves. You have a bit of that left in you, but you have to make sure that you're getting it in there quick and then resetting, not just taxing yourself by throwing everything at him all at once. You just want to make sure that you're getting there with your speed again, early and often to build up that lead and then give your a bit of a chance to catch your breath. Once you build that lead, it'll be up to you, of course, to be able to make sure you can build on it as much as you can, as late as you can, and then hold on if and when you do happen to begin to fade in this contest. Now, in terms of my pick here, prime versus prime, yeah, I might be inclined to go with Linares, but in 2023, my guess is Jack Catterall takes this fight comfortably. I think Linares starts well enough, but Catterall starts landing big left hands and pushing Linares back. The counter shots will work well here. Catterall will then begin to press forward, begin to get Linares into the ropes and hurt his man with more powerful shots around the guard and underneath the guard as well. The body attack will work well here. Eventually, I think Linares will retire on his stool in those latter frames, calling a halt to the action. Winner, Jack Catterall via late fight stoppage, though it could be sooner. Now, in terms of the betting odds here, you have Catterall as a sizable favor, coming in at a minus 850, with Linares at a plus 520. Really, there isn't that much value in a Catterall pick here, so you certainly stay away from that line, in my opinion. The only value is in the Linares upset. You're getting 5-1 to one odds against a guy who is a former world titleist. Yes, he's been on a losing streak, he is faded, he's 38. I'm not expecting to get a return on this bet, but if you're looking for any kind of value, a small bet there is really the only place you're finding it. You just have to expect to lose that bet. In terms of the over-under, haven't been able to find find a line just yet. I will post that in the comments and pin it as the top comment when I do find it. My guess is it'll probably be in the eight and a half to nine and a half range, but in any event for now, those are your odds. And my prediction record as of this recording is 31 and 12 with 22 exact, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth. And of course you can check out the socials here, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Greatly appreciate it. And be sure to visit jonboxing.com here for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, grades, all that good stuff. And as always, until next time.